Hello, I'm Bill Harris, and welcome to Life Questions, where we bring biblical solutions to the issues of life. Those issues may range from marriage to finances to international affairs or whatever. God's Word has much to say about life, and we want to share it with you, we, uh, with the answers to your questions that you, our viewers, have been sending us. So joining us today, we have a pastor of local, or rather a group of local ministers who are carefully and prayerfully reviewing your questions in preparation to answer them on today's program. And I want you to meet these ministers right now. They are Pastor Ryan Benroth of the Well Apostolic Center and Healing Well Ministry of Lima, Pastor Randy Coleman of Elida Emanuel Church, followed by Pastor Chris Ewing of the County Line Church of the Brethren, and Pastor Estrella Bassinet of the Church of Revival Refuge. And uh, we'll tell you more about that ministry because it's, it's international, but it's also locally here in Lima area. We welcome all of you to today's program. We're ha happy to have you all with us. Let's begin our discussion with missionary work. And we, we, we see that it's interesting that I think perhaps in this country more than any other country, we send more missionaries to the world uh, and so it, it is, the United States is very strategic in terms of evangelistic and missionary work. How well are your organizations dealing with missionary work? What impact are you having? Why don't we start with you, Pastor? All right. Thank you. Uh, well, our, um, our United Methodist Church overall mm -hmm. uh, does send out missionaries. Uh, we have missionaries all around the world. And we also uh, collaborate with other mission organizations, uh, like-minded mission organizations, and we send missionaries out there as well uh, to various parts of the world, uh, particularly Africa uh, and the uh, Far East, um, some work as well as in, in Latin America, South mm -hmm. America. Uh, so that's exciting, and people get a chance to be a part of that, either by going. Uh, our church has sent uh, several teams to Haiti and other places, and we're trying to get a, a team to go to Ecuador after everything kind of settles down uh -huh. with the uh, coronavirus and all of that. But uh, we're, we're excited about that, and uh, hopefully someday we'll be able to head to Ecuador for a mission trip there. Excellent. All right. Now, Brian, Pastor? Well, we're pretty early on in our uh, development and establishment, so right now I'd say our mission is right here locally <laughs> for the most part, but definitely would like to get to the point where we can send people uh, to different places also. Okay, very good. Mm -hmm. How about you, Pastor? Um, we, um, specifically our church, we support a lot of uh, mission work um, outside of not just missionaries but we support even the station you know the mm -hmm. you know WTGN and stuff. local missions local missions mm -hmm. and then also oh, yes. oversee missionaries um, since I've been at the church we have not sent a team out we are looking at trying to develop that but as a church we're really trying to focus within um, the five mile radius of our church and so we have um, really tried to tackle that and try to get as many of those people um, involved in whether it's our church or another church um, we're just ministering to them and meeting their needs. So that's mm -hmm. kind of what we've been focusing on the last two years. We have some people in our church that are um, mission-minded and gifted in that area. So we're having conversations with them about how does that look and how do we um, you know, supply for those needs and those giftings that God has given them and looking at them as a blessing to us mm -hmm. to help us um, to reach out more. So that's kind of what we're focused on. So, Professor okay. Estrella, yours is an interesting twist in that while you're missionary minded in terms of uh, places overseas, you also have missionaries who come to the United States, you, you being one of them. And people here in this country might find it strange to know that missionary work needs to be done in this country as well, am I right? Yes. Tell us how, you, how you're doing that. Yes, at the first time, um, the people are very surprising when we talk about we need to go to United States to open a church because the, most of the people see that we have many pastors and churches here, and, but God knows where are the necessity. Mm -hmm. And in the heart of God, he has Ohio mm -hmm. and Lima, mm -hmm. and we um, send to us here. And um, our church is a very small church, mm -hmm. only 25 people, 
but uh -huh. my husband and me before Ohio, uh -huh. we was in Venezuela seven years, uh -huh. and we are missionaries too, uh -huh. and we have a, a we have a church in Dominican Republic. Really? Yes, uh -huh. we have um, our council have a, a church in Dominican Republic, and we support them. And we are doing our job here and in other parts of the world. Okay. And, mm -hmm. Now, you've got a major event that's coming up here the end of April and, and on into May. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Okay. During the pandemic, um, my husband and me was praying, and I can sleep during the hours, uh, one, two, three, four, uh -huh. And I asked, asked to God, what do you want? Because I can sleep. Uh -huh. And God spoke to me, my church need help. And I say, what do you want? And he say, begin a praying time, uh -huh. one, two, three. Uh -huh. And I say, but wow. And he say, you have a channel, YouTube channel. Um, begin in your YouTube channel. And I spoke to my husband mm -hmm. and I say, what do you see? And he say, go ahead. And I, st I, I need to learn how to do it because I don't know how to do <laughs> that in my phone. Uh -huh. And I have uh, lessons to do. Uh -huh. And I start praying. Mm -hmm. I start my phone at 1, uh -huh. April 29. And the first night, we have 100, the second night, 200. And then we have 2,000, uh, 2,700 people during the day uh -huh. uh, praying with us. Wow. And we, we um, start April 29th, uh -huh. and this April 29th, we, are, we have one year praying every day, one to three. Yeah. And on Saturdays, we pray one to four. Oh, that's true. And yes, yeah, and we have um, many people around the world from Alemania, Alemany, um, Puerto Rico, mm -hmm. um, Suiza, Swiss, yeah. and um, Italy, mm -hmm. uh, Spain, um, Colombia, Venezuela, uh, Peru, Chile, um, Brazil. Um, around the world, they are pray, they connected with us. Yes. At the, at the um, here is one to three, but in Italy is six a.m. Uh -huh. In another part of the world are uh -huh. another um, time, but they, they we are together praying for family, uh, sons, um, the church, uh, for many many people with COVID. Um, write to oh, us yeah, to pray yeah. for that yeah. and we have many miracles oh my god we yeah. have many God oh, is no. doing something miracle yeah. marvelous with, with that uh -huh. program and this is the it's very um, difficult to explain how you feel when when somebody write to you I am from Italy uh -huh. I am from Brazil uh -huh. I am praying with you from, wow. oh my God, France. Yes. Uh, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's incredible. Excellent. Excellent. What, do you, what do you think about that? A move for evangelism and, and, and prayer that just yeah. connects Christians all over. Amidst all the, yeah, the divisions that we have in this country, yes. how, how do you think about this as being at least one of the answers to bring people together? Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. Prayer is the key to mm -hmm. bring people. I, I was just at a prayer meeting this morning for the new LifeWise Academy coming yes. in here. And mm -hmm. uh, wonderful. It's a great opportunity to be able to work with kids and uh, in our local schools here and uh, to have them learn the scripture and uh, to pray together, to learn about Jesus as they've never had an opportunity. Many of them haven't had that opportunity. So uh, I'm excited about that. And uh, prayer is definitely the key to open anything yeah. like that yes. and all of our mission work, whether it be local or overseas. Yeah. And here, I, I, as, as Pastor Estasia was saying, that all these different cultures that are coming together. And I yeah. think of the, the pockets of different culture, yes. the cultures that already exist in this country yeah. where there's so much division. If we would just let our guard down yeah. and just come together more as one, 
and concentrate on the common denominator that all Christians have, which exactly. is Jesus Christ, right. uh, we could probably even do more of that, would you say? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, I mean, well, things like prayer, worship, scripture, those are the things that we can all <laughs> agree on. Yeah. There, there's not necessarily, we're not all going to have the same beliefs or you might have different preferences and right. church styles right. and things like that. Exactly. But, but those are the things that we have in common that we can unite around. Yeah. And certainly uh, we're supposed to be united around the love of God. You yeah. know, Jesus, you will know them by their love. Their love. Yeah. So I was quoting that just yesterday. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that should be paramount in everything that yeah. we do. Amen. Any other comments you'd like to make? Well, I mean, if you just look at the aspect of this entire last year, um, it's interesting that God led you to do that in a, in a time where um, fellowship was really discouraged. And so it was a way that God was allowing, you know, the greater united body to come mm -hmm. and then partner with, because that's what we've been seeing as a church and what you're seeing in your movements and our churches, I'm sure, is, is that people are hungry for fellowship mm -hmm. and to the support of one another. Mm -hmm. And as much as, you know, like we sit there and say that our country is divided, I, I'm sure if we'd actually take time and sit down with one another, we would see that we're actually more united than we are divided. It's just a lot of people like to point out the division, right? You always right. see the negatives. You always remember the bad. It's always the good that's hard to see. It's always the good that is never remembered. Seems that like the so, bad, however, tends to have a greater presence mm -hmm. uh, and perhaps has a greater impact. I mean, mm -hmm. the shooting and the killing, the yeah. yeah. invasion of the Capitol, those kinds of things, they yeah. are very, very negative. Yes. And they, they overcloud the shadow. And they get the attention. Yeah, they do. They always get they the do. attention. Of course, yeah, like, yeah. what's that old saying? The bad news travels faster than good news. <laughs> you are right that the pockets of goodness and the pockets of peace yeah. that exist, uh, these are very often uh, unknown and uncovered. But I guess it still stresses the fact that we need to show forth that good and, and try to yes. bring that to the forefront, wouldn't you think? As well, much as possible. you know, we're talking about missions, right? And so when we look at the mission field, God sit there and said, hey, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers yeah. are few. Yes. You know, so he has already has said and said for centuries now then that there are plenty of people out there, right, for salvation and, yeah. and for discipleship yes. and different yes. things. And we just need to remember that. And so especially into COVID, like, that's what people are hungry for. And it woke the church up, I think, as the greater church. It, mm -hmm. it woke up, mm -hmm. up as one body. Mm -hmm. And we now are seeing an influx of, uh, for us, we're seeing an influx of, of people, um, new people that yeah. didn't know anything about God that, yeah. you know. Um, and so, you know, like we've had the question in our, our paperwork, you know, does the United States need missionaries? Well, yeah, because I'm mm -hmm. running into people that have no idea about the Bible. They yes. might have heard about church or God mm -hmm. in general, but they have not heard about Jesus Christ yeah. or know yeah. anything about yeah. scripture yeah. and what he has done. Yeah. And that's why it's great to see missionaries um, come to the United States. And honestly, all of us as pastors are missionaries uh -huh. in, in a way to our own community. So right. it's, it's fantastic seeing everything that God is doing and moving within the fellowship of the body and, and really growing it. So mm -hmm. excellent. Makes me think of to the, um, with Jesus walking with the disciples after resurrection mm -hmm. and there he's talking to him and afterwards they're like our hearts were burning yes. with his his words so like our words have carry the authority and power of heaven Isn't that something? Mm -hmm. and so people like that that haven't heard that they need to hear that and let mm -hmm. and that will cause their heart to burn for him more and just because we have technology available to find out about it doesn't mean that somebody's communicating that in yeah. a way that's, that causes their heart to burn necessarily. Yeah. So it, I think it's absolutely necessary to have missionaries in U.S. Yeah. and technologically yes. available yeah. areas still. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's really interesting. The, the, the thing you pointed out is that with all the technology, we still have people, you're, you're running into people, who have not really heard the gospel. They may know of God mm -hmm. in a general sense, but they still don't know about Jesus mm -hmm. Christ. Well, we want to delve into that a little bit more. We're going to take a break right now. And when we come back, I'd like to get into even some of the social problems that people are dealing with that, that, that where missionaries, evangelists, and pastors can and are stepping forward to help on. We'll deal with that and more right after this. Stay with us.
Don't go away. There's still a lot more discussion to come on this episode of Life Questions. But first, do you have a question for a future show? Email it to lifequestions at WTLW.com or call us 419-339-4444. You can also suggest pastures you feel would be a good fit for our panel. Again, send your question ideas and pasture suggestions to lifequestions at WTLW.com. Now back to the discussion. All right, we are back with more discussion on the effectiveness of ministry, be it through uh, evangelism, missionary work, pastor work, pastoral work, or whatever. Uh, one of the questions we got in from you, the viewers, quite poignant. Listen to this question. How do you honor your parents when they have been abusive to you or when they are addictive, addicted rather, and have stolen from you? How can an adult child be forgiving and loving in a situation like this. Uh, this is a, obviously a person that's hurting an awful lot yeah, that's yeah. just writing this. This is a person that needs ministry. Yes. Mm -hmm. If this person was sitting in, in, your, in your office right now, how, how would you minister to them? What would you say? Yeah. Well, I would say that, you know, forgiveness is a choice. Like it's just because it's hard doesn't mean it's not possible. Mm -hmm. And, um, it's and likely in this situation, it's going to be something that they need to continue to engage in. So and actually professing the words between you and God, it doesn't have to be, you don't have to go to your parent every time and say, well, I forgive you for doing this or that. Um, that a lot of times isn't going to help the situation, mm. but the forgiveness is for your heart right. and for you to receive healing so that you can not operate in a way that's bitter, but maintaining the love that we're supposed to be showing. So the best way to, that they can honor their parents in this situation is to love them. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, then they likely also need to set some boundaries that just because I love you, I love you that's not going to change doesn't mean that I trust you with everything yeah. <laughs> right now yeah. Yeah. until you you've shown some faithfulness yeah. and make some changes in life. But definitely receiving healing in their heart is that starts with forgiveness. The vast majority of the time mm -hmm. is very Absolutely. key. Yes. Um, I see that um, the person need to imitate the example of Jesus. And when he say God, Father, forgive them because they don't know what right. they are doing. And sometimes when the questions say addicted, um, maybe the person has a problem with drugs mm -hmm. and they are under the influence of drugs mm -hmm. and they don't know what they are doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the addiction, that the brain or the, the thought of the person who have addiction is yeah. different. And you need to think about it. Mm -hmm. and you need to ask for a forgiven heart and you need to see it's not my father it's the influence of the drug uh -huh. in him yeah. yes yeah. and if a, the abuse is different because maybe the abuse is from the influence of the drugs but um, the abuse maybe come from the childness of the person. Mm -hmm. Maybe they have abusive father and they are doing the same that the fathers um, do, did from, mm -hmm. to them. Mm -hmm. right. And you need to think about it. Yeah. Maybe you need to see the background, the past of the person, yeah. and maybe you understand more yeah. what's yeah. happening. Yeah. And he, we Absolutely. need to imitate the, the mm -hmm. sample yeah. of Jesus. It's excellent. Yeah. I think, um, you know, I mean, that you're right on. And one great example, which, you know, if you look at the disciples with Jesus and you look at the Last Supper, Judas was there, fully knowing Jesus, knowing that he was going to betray him, he was there. You know, he washed Judas's feet. He was there, fully knowing that that night, you know, he would be betrayed by Judas. And, and even though those are different situations, it is still the understanding that, hey, there's this parent that I have that is going to um, do harm to me. I still need to show them the love that Jesus showed to Judas. Um, now, you can go into the nitty gritties, and that's 
easier said than done, right? Because we have the yeah. full emotion, we are flesh, we are not Jesus, um, even though that's, our, that's what we strive to we be like. But, um, you know, sometimes you're going to have to take a step back. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes you're going to have to find help because you can't, because you just can't do it. Um, as a family, if you are not alone, then I would tell them, you know, surround yourself so that you can handle this, um, this parent not alone, but with others that can support you and strengthen you. Uh, the one thing I always tell everybody in situations um, dealing with family is to make sure that you can stand before the, the Lord as sinless as possible, mm -hmm. um, that you don't say anything out of anger to cause harm, mm -hmm. um, but that you, know, you can be angry. Mm -hmm. God, you know, scripture says you can be. Um, you can even be um, you know, hard on your parents saying, hey, you know, drawing lines, just like parents do with kids. And eventually kids will have to do that with parents because that's the role that goes on. And so it's not a, an easy cut and dry, black and white always, but there is the aspect of we do need to love on them like what we were saying and showing them the love yeah. of Christ. Mm -hmm. And I echo everything that uh, my colleagues are saying here. I think uh, it's very important to be involved in forgiving as hard and difficult as that is and to uh, always be in God's word to, to help us in these situations. And one thing that I would also add is uh, support groups. Mm -hmm. I would encourage this person uh, to get involved in some type of support group, uh, prayer. That's vital. That's such a key. And depending on how difficult the situation is, there might be need for some professional help too. Yeah. Uh, I, I would think in a situation like that, that we would need to do some referral yeah. uh, to other other help as well and being in a support group where you are along with others who are who have had the same experience exactly. with their parents that you have and let you know you're, you're not all alone in this struggle you know exactly that's that's very yeah. helpful that's very good advice yeah. now, here's another question that, that pertains to family i am praying that all of my kids come back to god listen yeah. to that this is the parent here it is so hard for me to watch them make decisions that are opposite how they were raised. Mm -hmm. I, I'm a parent of five. I, I can identify with that. Perhaps yeah. you, you have adult children. I don't think you do. Not but, yet. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> but certainly the rest of you perhaps yes. can identify with that. What would yeah. you say? How, how does this parent mm. deal with this? Because you know that you can't reach out there too far yes. with your comments because you're only going to push them further away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how do you draw them? without pushing them away? Um, you know, my oldest is 13, so I don't, you know, this is my biggest worry for my kids is that they would, you know, but having worked youth ministry for, you know, 20 years prior to stepping into the senior pastor position, um, I would counsel parents, because I've just seen it over and over, is you always love your kids, and uh, you always make yourself available, but you keep, to your standards and you keep to your, um, you know, what the Lord is telling you and what you know is right and true. And, um, you know, that kind of gets kind of difficult at times, but what they will see is if you start um, graying your own areas, then they'll take that as it, it's okay for me to live this way mm -hmm. or it's okay for me to make these decisions, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, and, and especially if it's dealing with huge lifestyle mm -hmm. um, issues versus different things. I know for me, um, I'm trying to preempt everything with my kids. And, you know, a lot of times when you send your kids to college, that's when you see a lot of things oh, um, yeah. um, change. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I know that we taught our kids certain things, um, you know, even, you know, we never did the Santa Claus thing with our kids. And this is always the example I give to other people is um, we always celebrated Santa, all that stuff. But I want credit for the presents, not this other guy. You know, I'm always the bad guy for so many days. Right. And I want credit at least the one day you know, a year. And so but um, when my kids started going to school, you know, I remember one of the, our kids being like, well, I believe Santa is real. And I'm like, well, why? Well, because my friends do. Mm -hmm. And which gave a huge insight oh, into what it, what this journey is going to be through all of school into college and all yeah. these things. Yes. And so we need, really need to speak wisdom 
into, and, and I, I know um, there's a, a father that's in our congregation right now that is doing very well with his son. And the son was in the youth group when I was there. And, and so I have relationships with this, um, now this 20 odd year old um, man that's in college. And he just references conversations that he's had with his dad and really seeking. And, it, and it's taking that connection. And as long as you can have that connection with your kid, you're, you're good. Um, but that's kind of the counsel that I usually say when, when, we're, when I would be dealing with parents in, in these situations. So I'm not sure what you guys do. Yeah. But. Do you want to make a comment? Okay. Um, the best thing that the father can do is pray. Yeah. I think it's pray. Uh -huh. And yeah. I have a very big testimony, no uh, about me or my husband, because we raised in a Christian family. But I have a cousin, cousin. Mm -hmm. um, she uh, raised in a Christian family, born in a Christian family. But when she has uh, 15 years, um, she go far from Jesus. Mm -hmm. And she has spent 15 years far from God. Mm -hmm. Now, she is a pastor from one of <laughs> our church. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. And Come she explained to yes, she explained yeah. to me. Um, my mom was praying for me. I know that, that you, uh, me, uh, you are praying for me. Mm -hmm. All my family are praying for me. And she explained that God directly um, preached to her during the job. And God began to uh, work with her to come back to me, come back to me, uh, telling that. And now she's a pastor. Yeah. And you need to be continuously praying for your children, yes. praying, praying. And not every day, but when the Holy Spirit told you, send a message yeah. or a phone, mm -hmm. not every day, because this is not, you don't need to be that. Yeah. Um, when the Holy Spirit told you, um, talk with them about Jesus, about you remember when you are at the church or something mm -hmm. like that, but you need to pray. Only pray. Mm -hmm. I have three kids, mm -hmm. and they born in our missionary house, mm -hmm. and now they are far from God, but the only seed that I do for, for him is, Pray. Every day yeah. I pray for them. Every day, every day. And I have a picture in my freezer and I put my hand in the head, in the yeah. picture, in the photos, and say, go, go, God, go inside his heart. And yeah. they say, don't be worried about it because only thing you need is pray. Yeah. 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 Prayer is key. Oh, it, it yes. really is. Yeah. Well, we're all, we're all out of time. We want to thank you very much for all your wonderful okay. comments and Hopefully the Lord has blessed by giving us some solutions here that people can use in their growth in the kingdom of God. We'll be back again next week and we'll have this same wonderful panel with us. So be sure you tune in again next week. Until then, I'm Bill Harris. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. You've been watching TV44's newest locally produced program, Life Questions. Now we'd like your feedback. What did you enjoy about this show and what would you like to see more? Perhaps you have your own questions you'd like us to pose to our panel of pastors in a future show. Submit your questions now by email to lifequestions at wtlw.com or call us with your thoughts. We're able to discuss relevant topics with local pastors right here in the TV44 studio thanks to your financial support. Now is an excellent time to make a one-time gift to TV44 or consider becoming a monthly donor. 100% of your donation stays right here at TV44 and is used to spread the family-friendly, life-changing message of Jesus Christ. Secure donations can be made online at WTLW.com, by phone, by mail, or in person. Again, share your questions for consideration for future shows or just contact us with your comments at lifequestions at WTLW.com. <laughs>